Potato is the number one vegetable in the world. It's grown in more than 80% of countries. And in terms of what is eaten, more potato is eaten than all other vegetables combined. It's fourth in importance to the major grain crops, rice, wheat, and corn. And actually, potato can deliver more than two to three times the nutrients than any of those grains can. So it is extremely important worldwide in nutrition. Okay, so these are the ones that are going to be sold. The goal of my research for some time has been to try to improve on the very best cultivar that Canada grows for processing and baking, the Russet Burbank cultivar. And in our lab, we use this potato tissue to try to regenerate plantlets that would have improved qualities over the original. The process starts with very small pieces of potato tissue that are placed in culture. Um, wound tissue is generated and from all of the potato cells new plants are grown and the plantlets are then taken to the field. After a field season, we do uh, yield analysis and uh, test for sugars, and we select lines that have improved yield and processing characteristics. So originally, the point of my research was to find russet burback lines that had the uh, highest yield and the best frying properties, because that's what the commercial industry was interested in. After talking with Stan Kubo, we realized that we could be also selecting for potato lines that had better nutritional properties. Potato uh, can be a useful source of compounds called polyphenols. These are the compounds that have been linked with health benefits for red wine and dark chocolate, but the potatoes are actually, because they're food stable, the most important dietary source of uh, polyphenols. For instance, in the French diet, the number one source of polyphenols is not red wine, but is potato. We wanted to see if there was big variations in polyphenol content among cultivated varieties of potato, the called cultivars. Potato cultivars that were identified, we decided to do an extraction process to concentrate up to 20-fold higher content of the polyphenols. And uh, which treatments uh, are you I'm applying? I'm going to use different polyphenols, uh, synthetic uh, polyphenols. Polyphenols have a quality called anti-inflammatory, which is important against disease, a variety of diseases that are associated with inflammation, such as lung disorders. And in that light, air pollution causes damage to uh, lungs, including inflammation that causes that damage. And so we decided to test an animal model where animals were exposed to an air pollutant and then uh, see the protective effects of the extract. We demonstrated that there was potent anti-inflammatory and lung protection from the extract in those animals. So uh, to get the benefits, you would have to eat a lot of potatoes, which is not realistic, whereas an extract could be readily taken in as a supplement or taken as an ingredient in uh, certain foods. This uh, discovery is very exciting because it's one of the first to demonstrate of that a food item uh, or an extract can have this protective effect against air pollution. Uh, the problem with air pollution is there's no real uh, therapeutic or preventative approach that has been identified to date. And so this has the potential of uh, taken as a supplement to prevent against the mal effects of air pollution. So recognizing the potent anti-inflammatory effects of the extract, we brought in our colleague Lou Ashland to explore whether the extract was protective against the development of obesity and diabetes induced by diet. This really says that everything we've done before is completely reproducible. My area of interest is in the uh, biochemistry and molecular biology of nutrition. And uh, we thought it would be uh, interesting to study the collection of polyphenols that's present in the extract. So what we did was we took uh, two groups of mice, both fed with a diet uh, that induces obesity, very much like the diet that we eat today. One group uh, received the potato extract and the other did not and followed them over a 10-week period. Amazingly, at the six-week time period uh, into the diet, we can clearly tell which group had received the potato extract versus the group that did not receive the potato extract. And that's because the group that received the potato extract were leaner, 
compared to the other ones, uh, the other group, of course, which were fatter. And by the 10-week period, uh, it was very clear that uh, the potato extract uh, it was effective in uh, reducing the, the fatness of, of these mice that had received the diet that normally causes obesity. Our ultimate goal is, is to come up with some sort of product that the public can touch, perhaps a powder um, that people can put on their food uh, and they, they would know that it works and it would help them to lose weight and uh, uh, regain normal uh, body weight. So what's our next step? Our next step, I think, is to look at funding to do this in the human clinical context. That would be nice. Of course, the better way to approach this entire problem is to decrease the amount of calories uh, that we take in. But for those people who are already overweight and obese, this might help in improving um, uh, the capacity of the body to be able to help itself and uh, burn off, if you like, uh, the, uh, the excess calories. So when you think about it, this is not really too surprising considering that you know, mom always told me to eat my vegetables and it's the goodness of the vegetables in, in, in the whole thing that is what's promoting health. So mom didn't lie.